Hi everyone. Hi everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to another episode of the Workplace Wellness Series. In our last episode, we highlighted the fact that in considering the journey back to reopen your workplace, several factors needed to be considered. But on our show, for the sake of convenience and simplicity, we have grouped them into three broad categories, namely the workplace, the workforce, and communication. In this episode, we shall touch on how to assess the levels of risk that pertains currently at your workplace, how that affects the safety of your employees in terms of protecting them against infection, and how to communicate identified risk and planned changes to all stakeholders. It is extremely vital to be able to assess the level of exposure of your workforce and your workplace vis-a-vis -vis your organization's ability to implement the recommended protocols of washing of hands, wearing of the face mask, keeping a physical distance, and avoiding crowded places. This process will help you determine whether it is worthy in the first place to reopen your workplace and what changes are needed to reduce the level of exposure to the risk that you have identified and whether you have the capacity in terms of financial resources and human resources to implement whatever changes have been identified. Now, before we get into the actual discussion on uh, risk assessment, I want to point out that it is absolutely vital that you have a pandemic or COVID response team. Now, this should be a cross-functional team from different departments within your organization. It come from IT, HR, operations, so that this team is tasked to outline and assign responsibilities to team members in areas of communication, implementation, and monitoring of the changes that have been recommended for your organization. This will ensure that your employees receive clear communication in regards to your return to work action plan. It is a necessity, a vital necessity, for you to have a rep from senior management in this committee. And I also strongly recommend that you engage the services of a facilities professional or workplace professional and a corporate wellness specialist. So there are internal and external factors when it comes to assessing the risks with your workplace. External factors have to do with factors that are outside the control of your organization. So at the national front, how is the disease behaving, what is the spread rate, what is the government's uh, policy and actions in terms of trying to control the disease. It could also be the region in which you, you, your operations run. So if you are in a region that has a, a higher rate of infection, that is a risk that you cannot control, but it affects your business. It could be your community. So say you, you are in a particular location in Accra that has been identified as a hot spot. So your internal risk assessment has to identify potential hazards that may expose your employees to COVID-19 at the workplace. So you look at your office or production or service area in terms of ventilation, air quality, air circulation and filtration, and if you have the opportunity, enough windows and doors to get in natural air for ventilation. You also look at your office setup in terms of workstations, arrangement, uh, whether you are practicing uh, fixed desking or hot desking plants, and uh, what production lines are within your organization. You also have to consider your cleaning and hygiene regimes what do you have in place now? Um, Pre-COVID, a lot of organizations just had uh, the cleaning outcomes were just looks clean. But 
in the course of COVID and beyond COVID, we would have to look at it in terms of whether it's hygienic. So you clean, you sanitize, you disinfect. So you have to look at what is in place now and uh, think about upscaling. Then you also have to look at traffic flow within your workplace and how you can manage crowd in walkways. So does your organization have alternative entry and exit points? Or there's only one alleyway that everybody has to, I mean, they have to meet each other along the way. So if that is the case, what are you going to do about it? Then you also need to look at your washrooms, washroom hygiene. Do you have constant and reliable flow of water within your washroom? Because one of the places that has a lot of touch points is the washroom. If you're going to the washroom, you touch the door handle, you use the WC, you have to touch a button to flash, you have to touch a button to wash your hands and all of that. So those are all risks that you have to consider and look at how you can uh, move away from these practices. You also may have to look at where you are in a vertical space, so a story building, the lifts that are available, do they have enough space, How? what is the capacity, or the elevators, what are their capacities, how many people can it transport, how far does it go, can you use the staircase as an alternative. Then you also have to look at canteen and food and break services. So in your organization, what is the current practice? Are your employees having to leave the workplace to go to the chop bar next door to go and have fufu at lunchtime? Or you have a, a catering service that comes to the location to serve? You have to look at that. Then you also have to look at your changing rooms and how traffic flow in and out of it are managed. Now let's move onto your workforce. So your risk assessment in terms of your workforce should look at the level of exposure and need for contact within six feet of others, e.g. your clients and their colleagues. And it should also look at the ability and willingness of your employees to come back to work. Now, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration of the USA, OSHA, has given four classifications of the level of risk of workers' exposure to COVID-19. The first level is the lower exposure risk. And this applies to jobs that do not require contact with people known to be or suspected of being infected with COVID-19. Workers in this category have minimal occupational contact with the public and other co-workers. The medium exposure risk has to do with jobs that require frequent close contact with people who may be infected but who are not known to have or suspected to having COVID-19. High exposure risk deals with jobs with a high potential for exposure to known or suspected sources of COVID-19. So this could be with employees in the healthcare delivery sector at the hospitals, clinics, where suspected patients report to their centers and they have to be attended to. And the very high risk exposure levels are jobs with very high potential for exposure to known or suspected sources of COVID-19. And these deal with specific medical and postmortem or laboratory procedures. So this definitely has to do with the medical personnel in the ER or COVID centers that are actually treating COVID patients. Your timing for communication must be spot on. Communication has to go out at the right time. There shouldn't be any delays and as we know, things are changing on a daily basis. You have to respond to concerns of employees in 
a mindful, conscious, and intentional matter. And in all this, there should be consistency, there should be proactivity. To sum it all up, every organization has to conduct its own risk assessment to determine the risk that pertains to their peculiar situation and adopt infection control strategies based on their hazard assessment. And along the line, they should revisit the process and look at their action plans as you make progression and as conditions in the area change. To achieve the above, you must always have your COVID or pandemic response team in place. And as recommended, it is key to employ the services of a facilities management professional and a corporate wellness specialist. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Please remember to keep your physical distance, but also remember to stay socially connected.